First, on the top left hand corner is the Sample Browser menu. This menu contains all of Chompler's factory library samples as well as purchased sample packs and user imported samples. All the samples are organized and filtered in different categories. Those categories are drums and percussion, melodic samples, synthesis, vocals and effects, and user imports. When a category is selected, all the samples within that category will appear on the right side of the menu. Each factory library sample or purchase samples will indicate the name, what key it's in, and the tempo slash BPM. Pressing the play button will preview the selected sample and pressing the stop button will stop the preview. Tap the sample to load into Chompler's engine. Once loaded, use the keyboard to play the pre chop sample, which is laid out across all the keys on the keyboard. At the top is the browser filter icons. This is used as another way to navigate the sample library and also to organize user imported samples, which we'll get into later. The currently selected filter will be highlighted green. Only one filter can be applied at a time. Next is the reset icon, which resets all of Chompler's settings, parameters, and effects to default. For example, I'll adjust a few parameters within the effects section. As soon as I tap the reset icon, all of the effects parameters that were adjusted will go back to default. Next is the gear icon, which opens up the menu for MIDI and audio buffer size settings. MIDI channels 1 through 16, or Omni, which is the default setting, can be selected using the arrow buttons. Background audio is used for playing live or for the device to continuously listen into the audio even when the app is running in the background or not visible. Always on slash don't sleep is used when playing live or for the device to continuously listen into the MIDI channel. Enabling this function will automatically set background audio to on. Here is where you can set the audio buffer size settings within Chompler. Increasing the buffer size will increase the audio quality, resulting in less glitches and crackles but may increase operating latency within the audio path. Lowering the buffer size will reduce the audio quality, which may introduce crackles, but will improve the audio signal latency. Select the value that produces the best results. A good rule of thumb is to try and keep the number as high as possible without affecting the audio signal path latency. It's also worth mentioning that these settings may not be available within some host apps and is generally used in standalone. For example, here I have Chompler opened as an AUV3 instrument plugin within Beatmaker 3. As you can see, the gear slash settings icon is no longer visible on Chompler's interface. Since Beatmaker 3 is being used as a host app, those settings now apply to Beatmaker 3's audio and MIDI settings. Now look here. Beside the settings menu is the shopping cart icon which opens up the Chompler in-app store for more sample packs. Next is the import icon, which opens up the sample import menu. This menu allows you to import your own samples using the files app within your iOS device. Next is the scissors icon, which opens up the chop type menu. This menu allows you to choose between the different chop types that are applied to the current selected sample. On the right is a label that indicates the current app version. Up above is the MSX Sound Design logo, which opens up the online iOS app site. 
Here's where you will find all information and inspiration regarding MSX Sound Design apps. You can also download the manual from here as well. Next is the effects section. Chompler has eight built-in single parameter effects, which is globally applied to the selected sample. In the middle of the interface is the sample display, which displays the waveform of the sample and the sample info. Underneath is the sample parameter data, which selects the sample data function for the parameter to adjust. Next is the data adjustment slider and data adjustment buttons which is used to adjust the setting of the selected data parameter. To the left are the three operating modes, polyphonic, chromatic, and all, which sets the Chompler playback and editing options. Above the operating modes is the volume display, which displays the overall output level. Next is the keyboard, which is used to play the selected sample. It's important to note that Chompler's keyboard is only available in standalone mode. When Chompler is used as an AUV3 instrument plugin within a host app, the host will control the keyboard functionality. In the middle is the Bluetooth MIDI settings menu, which allows you to set up a Bluetooth connection between your Bluetooth MIDI device and Chompler. Next is the keyboard settings menu. In this menu, you can adjust the key color to white or dark, adjust the octave range to one two, or three, and adjust what key labels is shown on the keyboard, which is all, octave, or none. To the left is keyboard transpose, which shifts the keyboard up two octaves or down two octaves. Lastly is the volume parameter, which adjusts the overall output level of Chompler. And just a reminder, you can also refer to page four of the manual, which also covers Chompler's interface. Hand me that ox cord.